Okay, so I'm there's, a, there's a protest happening here for Palestine in Gaza in Al Tarawali Park from the Tahamnes area. So it's the local people that get together for prayers and, and speeches and support, but uh, solidarity to Palestine, inshallah. Free, free Palestine. So I'm here to just uh, view uh, what's happening here and I'll support them as well. It's in the dark, uh, but uh, on the line, still quite a lot of people, about probably a couple of hundred. Got some police here as well, just to make sure there's nothing, no violence happens here, uh, and it's all done peacefully. Free, free Palestine, inshallah. We have seen the bombs drop on hospitals. We have seen people who have gone to hospitals to be treated. We have seen people, Palestinians in Gaza, who have gone to the hospitals for shelter and the bombs have been dropped. A place that is a safe haven is a place that were killed by the Israeli bombs. Our next speaker is Brother Suleiman. Please welcome Brother Suleiman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, we're here today to remember the innocent Palestinians who've been killed in targeted Israeli airstrikes across the last few weeks. Civilians have been forced to take refuge in hospitals, churches, and mosques after entire neighborhoods were demolished. Such public buildings are supposed to be places of safety and security. However, this concept that we take for granted has now become a luxury for some Palestinians. To bomb hospitals of injured men, women, children, and the elderly, along with doctors, nurses, and paramedics is a war crime under international law. And it's the utmost act of cowardice. My brothers and sisters, when I wrote this speech earlier this week, the death toll was around 8,000. Now there are over 9,000 innocent lives that have been taken away as a result of this brutality. As a Palestinian medical student, this tragedy has brought me deep sorrow from the people in my home city. Both Palestinians and healthcare workers bravely risk their lives to save the lives of not only the ones living, but also our future generations. I wish I had the time to read out the names of every healthcare worker and every patient that has been lost, but there are too many names to count. My brothers and sisters, I had two main aims of this speech. One is to call for a ceasefire and to end the siege over Gaza and the other was to remember those lives lost and reflect on how privileged we are to be here right now. As a medical student, I know that I am safe on hospital wards. I know that all medical professionals can prioritize our safety and that I don't have to worry about bombs dropping down on me. We are so guilty of taking things for granted. We go to hospitals sometimes and what are we most concerned about? Oh, the doctor was rude to me. Oh, oh I've got to pay a lot for parking. Look how ungrateful we are. Look how ungrateful we've become. Be grateful, my brothers and sisters, for the privileged situation we're in, alhamdulillah. We don't go to hospitals and watch doctors perform surgeries on the torchlight, or worse yet, without anesthetic. We must be grateful for all of this. Make that intention with me now. My final part is about what we can do for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Firstly, I want to see each and every single one of you at the protest this Saturday. They hear us, and I'm guilty of it myself, thinking that protests don't matter or they don't make a difference until I got messages from my own family in Gaza saying, we can see that London cares, and we see that you remember us. Thank you. They're saying thank you to us for remembering them. Are we not ashamed? This is the least we can be doing, making not just our voices, but the voices of our Palestinian brothers and sisters heard. Secondly, share, share, and share some more. We don't know who may benefit from the posts we share, whether it's boycotting or events that may happen. And if you do post, my brothers and sisters, make sure to act on it as much as you can. Alone, we may not be able to do much, but a hundred of us, a thousand of us, 300,000 of us, they can make a difference. Let's show up this Saturday and keep breaking attendance records week on week. I stood before you last week and I said, let's see 500,000 people at that protest. And guess what happened? We all showed up. How high can we go, my brothers and sisters? It's in your hands. I pray to Allah that he liberates the Palestinian people. 
I pray to Allah that he eases the pain of those suffering. I pray to Allah that he liberates all those oppressed around the world. I pray to Allah that he grants the martyrs the highest ranks of paradise. I pray to Allah that he gives us all a long, in life, a long enough life to witness and visit a free Palestine. Our free Palestine. I pray to Allah that he forgives us for our shortcomings. And I pray to Allah that we continue remembering the Palestinian people and stop it from becoming another trend on social media. Don't make the suffering of Palestinians another trend, my brothers and sisters. Their deaths are not in vain and we will not be silent. We will not rest and we will not stop until Palestine is free. They may be forcing the Palestinians out of Palestine, but they will never be able to force the Palestine out of us. May Allah bless you all. Jazakum Allah khair. Our next speaker, a young brother. Our next speaker, a young brother.